on this slide we can see um, colonic polyp and here is the normal column here we can recognize the mucosa, muscularis mucosa, submucosa and muscularis propria and uh, this is the polyp it is pedunculated because we can see the stalk here another subtype could be sessile polyp uh, with a broad base and we can see right away that this is dysplastic polyp uh, if we pay closer attention to this epithelium we can see that it is darker than normal epithelium full of goblet cells and that's the sign of dysplasia and dysplastic changes um, so let's go a little bit closer to find out why uh, this part of the polyp is uh, dark uh, the normal epithelium is full of goblet cells uh, all the nuclei are neatly arranged above the basement membrane in the lower part of the cells the nuclei are uniform with vesicular chromatin without any hyperchromasia or mitotic figures on the other side uh, here we can see the dysplastic epithelium with um, a slightly pleomorphic nuclei uh, with, uh, uh, and here the nuclei are localized in the middle portion um, of the cells they are hyper hyperchromatic therefore uh, these uh, cells have darker color and uh, we can see mitotic figures here and here for example um, <coughs> if these changes are more prominent uh, the cells are more more pleomorphic the hyperchromatic nuclei are localized in the upper portion of the epithelium then we can diagnose high-grade dysplasia but these changes are mostly low-grade so this is low-grade adenoma uh, the word adenoma means that we can uh, we can diagnose dysplasia uh, non-dysplastic polyps are not called adenoma uh, we have two types according to architecture tubular and villous adenoma and uh, this polyp is tubular adenoma because the crypts are mostly tubular on the cut section uh, on the cross section we can see round shapes on the longitudinal sep section they look like small tubes and um, the villi looks like these leaf-like structures um, for example here we can see one villus uh, um, if uh, both components are and both of them represent more than 25 percent of the polyp then uh, we can call it tubulo villus adenoma it is very important to diagnose uh, dysplasia in those polyps and differentiate these polyps from hyperplastic non-dysplastic polyps uh, because adenoma is associated with risk of um, uh, turning into carcinoma and this is called adenoma carcinoma sequence um, so uh, the sequence usually start with adenomatous polyposis coli gene mutation and uh, APC is in the fifth chromosome and as it is typical tumor suppressor gene so we need to have both copies mutated uh, to get uh, adenoma and over the time um, we can have more of these mutations like in the KRAS gene in P53 so over the time slowly this adenoma can turn from low grade to high grade and then to invasive carcinoma with metastatic potential so it's very important to remove all of these adenomatous polyps before they turn into carcinoma and in patients with um, familial adenomatous polyposis where uh, the one um, one copy of uh, adenomatous polyposis coli gene um, <coughs> is affected by germ-like mutations uh, then uh, these patients have very high risk of um, um, of colorectal carcinoma and they have um, hundreds and thousands of these polyps so in that case it's much better to uh, to remove the whole colon Another important differential diagnosis is uh, um, traditional serrated adenoma and sessile serrated adenoma or sessile serrated polyp. And we should also mention that sessile adenomas, high grade adenomas, adenomas that are uh, larger than two centimeters, and adenomas with uh, villus type of histology 
are associated with higher risk of progression uh, into colorectal carcinoma. So this is tubular adenoma with low-grade dysplasia. Thanks for watching.